Mark chapter 9, and Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here today um, who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after his coming power. He will not see death. Who is that you wonder? I have to wonder who will not taste death until uh, you, they see the kingdom of God. And that is really interesting. But what it means is, you know, at that time, right after that transfiguration happened, and who went out to see the transfiguration? Peter, James, and John. You know, the commentary also said, presumably Jesus was referring to Peter, James, and John. They would see the kingdom of God before they die. The kingdom of God expression uh, in an epic way is transfiguration. In the context of the scripture, we can quite safely take, this is referring to transfiguration, which is the kingdom of God. The seed, the kingdom of God comes with power. Isn't that power? What happened to the transfiguration? After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes were radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. He was intensely white. Do you know that whiteness? It's really like what happened to God when he descended on Mount Sinai. His face, his, I mean, his radiant glory, lightning and thunder, everything. Even Moses went up to talk with me with God for 40 days after, the, after he came down. His face was shining with brilliant light, so much so that Israel asked Moses, Put a veil over your face because it's hurting our eyes. Then this is exactly what's happening to Jesus. Jesus' clothes becoming intensely white, radiant white, shiny. So much so, the, the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, were afraid. Were so afraid. Don't know what to say. You see, that is a, that's a transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain. That's the, what do you call that? Jesus showing the power of the kingdom of God. That is Jesus showing for a moment, probably less than 10 minutes, few minutes, just show the eschatology, what is to come. Right now, what they see is totally human Jesus. It's not glorified Jesus. Okay, he has no resurrected from the dead. But Jesus gave them a glimpse of what it's going to be like. And I just so encouraging because for one thing, it will encourage us of the end time coming. And eschatology, it means end time. Parousia, the return of Christ. You know, when we see what's going to happen in the end, we can live our present life with so much more power and joy and conviction and confidence and faith, right? Because you already know what the ending is like. It's like going to uh, Super Bowl is coming up, I think next week. You know, if you're rooting for a team so passionately, like what I'm rooting pretty pretty strongly for one team now to win the Super Bowl, I kind of feel nervous every time they made a blunder. The the uh, the I think it's the National Football Championship. You know, uh, Chiefs were, were, were struggling to, 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 to beat Bengals until the end. So I switched off for a while. And then by the time it's finished, I didn't see the entire thing. And then I turned on the news. I checked my web news on my phone and said, Chiefs is going, is going to the Super Bowl. I said, what? They're in. They won. So I quickly went back and saw the highlights. You know, I was so, so relaxed. So happy to, to see, you know, to enjoy, because I already know the end results. You know, I, I didn't have that tenseness. I didn't have that doubts and the uncertainty anymore. I just knew exactly what's gonna happen. It's already happened, actually. 
So it's the same thing with us. When Jesus showed the eschatological appearance, the end time appearance of what he will be to, Christ, uh, to, to Peter, James, and John, he's telling them that, folks, look, lift up your eyes. The end is coming. When I come back, this is going to be me. All right? Church, be strong. At the end time, I'm coming back. That's going to be me. It will be so amazing, so tremendous. We shall all be one, living together as one family of God forever and ever. There'll be no more tears. I wipe all your tears away. No more pain. No more grief. No more sorrows. No more evil. No more sins. Wow. Paradise, precisely. is exactly paradise. It's going to be the best moment of your life. For at that moment, will not end. How about that? This goes on and on and on and on. It will be just the best. The Lord has so much blessed us. That so encourages. I hope it encourages you to stay firm and looking forward to the end time. Looking forward to that eschatology. Be be sure you read my article. Um, I will post it together. I said that consumerism or materialism uh, really, really just cause people failure to look at the end time because they're so bogged down with the present. So read that, but really, Jesus gives us a glimpse of His glory, of His end time appearance. Folks, be ready for the end time. When Christ comes back, there's no more fighting. The fighting will be over, everything over. The, the victory is completely won. The dragon of the devil has been thrown into hellfire with the sulfur burning with all the false prophets and the beast. And all those who reject Christ and mock Christ, so those who have not believed, I urge you to make a strong decision to consider, read the Bible, consider the divinity of Christ, what He claims and what He offers. Folks, Jesus resplendent with the glory of God on the mount to show to Peter, James, and John. It was His way to tell the world a glimpse, that glimpse, that transfiguration lasted for less than half an hour, past, you know, that kind of thing. But it's just a few conversations now. Right after that, the, the stupid uh, Peter said, Oh, Lord, let me make three tents for you. He have no idea what he's talking about. Because Elijah and Moses appeared. Now, right after that, God's voice said, Listen to, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. There's an affirmation. That voice is not for Jesus. That voice is for Peter, James, and John. Folks, listen to Jesus. He's my son. That's the voice of God from heaven. They were overwhelmed, stunned. And then Jesus told them, don't tell anybody until I'm raised from the dead. They were scratching their heads, <laughs> going down the mountain, mountains. What does he mean by raising, rising from the dead? Why don't they just ask him? But Jesus already said many, 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 many times, explicitly, the Son of Man shall be killed. But three days later, he shall rise from the dead. Jesus has said it so many times, and yet the 12 closest disciples don't get it. How about, how about that? It's like us today. We have been in the church many, 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 many years. And some of the major doctrines, we don't get it. Or... We kind of know the doctrines intellectually in our heads, but we don't get it in our hearts. So folks, this is powerful. One last thing, Elijah and Moses appear to Jesus. I believe that is very revealing. Those who have died, the saints, those who believed in Christ who have died, they are with the Lord now. Their spirits are with the Lord. That's why they can appear to, to Peter, James and John, to the Lord, a Jesus transfiguration when called upon is a, it is such a comforting thing this confirms what Jesus said to the thief on his right side on the cross to today you shall be with me in paradise there's a spirit the the flesh will come later when Jesus returns with a big trumpet amen God bless you